Good morning and welcome to worship on this wonderful day. It's a very special day, especially for Naomi today. So if you are coming here to support, especially Naomi today, and you're not worshiping usually here, then it's a special welcome to you and also to everyone who is watching on the internet. And I've got a special uh, message, actually, for someone who's watching on the internet. Um, Uncle David, Naomi, from Barrow in Furness, he wishes to uh, send you the best wishes. No, don't you start. That's not the point. <laughs> and he's really thinking of you this morning and send his love and prayers on this very special day for you. And he will watch online later. So this is especially for you. So yes, as I said, especially a big welcome if you're coming here to worship. Uh, well, as you are coming here for worship and also to support Naomi. All the information that you need to know is in the weekly bulletin, so please make sure that you take your copy as your leave. At the end of the meeting, we're going to have some refreshments, so please uh, don't uh, run away as quickly uh, as soon as the meeting goes. Next weekend is quite a busy weekend for our uh, band, um, senior band, and on uh, Saturday at 7 p.m. there is a band concert called Salt and Light, uh, which will include uh, the vocalist Luli Tegil, who's a worship songwriter and singer, vocalist, and also composer and conductor Mark Feltwell. The tickets, there are still tickets available, and they are five pounds, and Hilton, at the end of the meeting, will be in the corridor um, ready to sell tickets. So if you haven't got your ticket, please make sure that you pick up your ticket um, at the end of the meeting. On Sunday, next Sunday at 10 a.m., the meeting will be led by our band. So thank you, band, for what you have prepared or what you're preparing for this in advance. And they will be at Page Park at 12 o'clock for the 80th anniversary of D-Day service. So if this is something that you want to support, please feel free to go at 12 at Page Park. And between 4 and 6 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon, it will be Messy Church. It has come fast this, uh, this last month, so please do make sure um, that you either pray for Messy Church, that you come uh, to this uh, wonderful... We've got so many new families that are coming every time. It's just wonderful to see. So between 4 and 6 o'clock, Messy Church. There are two very uh, special birthdays today. First of all, it's Linda James's birthday today. So where are you? She's outside. You're outside. Linda James, happy birthday to you today. <laughs> and our bandmaster, Mark Willets, is turning 65 today. Congratulations. <laughs> Absolutely. So now we've got to handle him with care, all right? I would like to thank Pauline Perkins for the flowers this morning on our holiness table, and these are in memory of Roy Rodman. Thank you, Pauline. Well, thank you very much, Miriam. Uh, and it's good today to worship together, to come together to worship, but also celebrate Naomi's enrolment. And we're going to stand. We're going to start with a song that she's chosen, and it's number nine hundred and sixty in the songbook. If you're using that book. And it says, in the army of Jesus, we've taken our stand to fight against the forces of sin. To the rescue we go, Satan's power to a throw, and his captives to Jesus will win. And the chorus says, I'll stand for Christ, for Christ alone. And hopefully that is what we all want to say this morning, that we will stand for him. Amid the tempest and the storm, where Jesus leads, I'll follow on. I'll stand, I'll stand for Christ alone. So we will stand and we'll sing this song together, please. <laughs>
thank you. Please sit down. Now, unfortunately, none of our young people's sections can take part today because it's the end of half term and there's still quite a few of them away. Uh, but we're uh, glad to just now to listen to the band as they bring us a piece again chosen by Naomi, Guardian of My Soul. Thank you.
Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you because you are the guardian of our souls. As we've seen images there of Jesus and the cross, we just thank you for sending your son to earth to live as a human and to die and rise again. To die for us so that we can become your children. We just pray that you'll help us today as we witness somebody taking the next step of their journey of faith. Think about our own journey of faith. Help us to know what the next step is for each one of us. Speak to us, Lord, today through what we hear, through the music that we hear or play, through the songs that we sing. We just pray that you will speak to us. Help our hearts and our minds to be open to that. We ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. Now, does anybody here like going on long journeys? Oh, one person at least. Okay, now, do you like going on long journeys, Mark? I do. Excellent. Now, if you were to go, imagine you were going on a long journey tomorrow, okay? Uh, what sort of mode of transport would you, would you prefer if money was no object, okay? So, I mean, you, you could go in a car, you could go on a bike, you could go on a motorbike, you could go on a ship. You can go on an aeroplane. So should we have a show of hands for your most... You can only vote once, okay? So put your hand up if you'd prefer to go by car. Is it across, oh, the, is it across the sea? About four or five people, okay? What about by bike, as in pedal bike? Yeah, <laughs> excellent. What about motorbike? Anyone? Oh, yeah, one or two. What about a plane, an aeroplane? Oh, more people. And what about a ship? Mm, ship might be the most favourite. Okay. And there may be other modes of transport that I haven't mentioned. Okay. A train, of course. A train. Anybody like a train? Thank you very much. And there are other modes of transport. Okay. Now, if you don't know the way to somewhere, if you're going on a long journey and you don't know the way to somewhere, uh, what do you prefer to use? Do you prefer to use an old-fashioned printed map? Or a sat-nav? Or maybe somebody sitting beside you telling you the way to go. <laughs> now, when you're on a journey, any sort of journey, whether it's a short journey or a long journey, okay, it's important to know where you're going, isn't it? It is important to know where you're going, but sometimes you just don't. You just don't really know the way. Now, as we continue our Transform by Pentecost series... Today, we're going to look at Lydia and how her transformation was a bit like a journey, okay? And uh, sometimes, I think, in life, we're, we're on a journey and we can feel a little bit lost in life, not just in the car, can't we? We can feel a little bit lost in our life. But the good news is that God is waiting to find us and to show us the way and walk alongside us. So we're going to now sing song number 483, if you're using the songbook, because that song says, When I was lost, you came and rescued me, reached down into the pit and lifted me. Oh Lord, such love, I was as far from you as I could be. You know all the things I've ever done, but Jesus' blood has cancelled everyone. Oh Lord, such grace to qualify me as your own. We'll stand and we'll sing this through, please.
please sit down? The old has gone and the new has come. Hallelujah. And we're going to listen to that transformation that happened in Lydia's life just now as we have our Bible reading and Beth's going to come and read it for us. And after the Bible reading, we're going to move into the enrolment time of this meeting and I'll invite uh, Major Fred Grandad uh, to Naomi to come to the platform after this Bible reading. Thank you, Beth. The reading is from Acts chapter 16, verses 11 to 15. From Troas we put out to sea and sailed straight for Samothrace, and the next day on to Neapolis. From there we travelled to Philippi, a Roman colony and the leading city of that district of Macedonia, and we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river, where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth from the city of Thyatira, who was a worshipper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptised, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. Amen. First of all, I would say a sincere thank you to uh, your core officers, Nicola and Colin, for allowing me to do this enrolment, very special day uh, for us as a family, and uh, I'm so thrilled uh, that uh, again here I am with my family and uh, taking part in this special occasion. Naomi, I would say these words to you. They are the words that have come Uh, to my heart as I have thought of this uh, ceremony. They are the words from Proverbs chapter 3 where the writer says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight For here is another step of the journey. Here is another way that God is going to take your life and use you. What the outcome of that journey will be, will be between you and God. And at moments you will need to seek his wisdom and his guidance. But as that beautiful piece of music has reminded us, We have a guardian of our soul, one who will journey with us. And so we will move into this lovely act of enrolment. And we're going to sing together, and those of you using songbooks, song number 591. 591. I would be thy holy temple, sacred and indwelt by thee, nor then could stain my commission. Tis thy divine charge to me, take thou my life, Lord. And so as we sing the first verse, and we will remain seated to sing, as we sing the first verse, the colours of the Salvation Army will be brought to the platform.
sing the second verse. I'm going to invite Kay, please, to bring Naomi to the platform as we sing together the second verse. Just play the chorus again. to become soldiers of the Salvation Army are required to sign the Articles of War known today as our, a Soldier's Covenant. As you sign that covenant, you will testify that you worship God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. You have accepted Jesus Christ as Saviour and Lord. You desire to fulfil the membership of his church here on earth as a soldier of the Salvation Army. And you affirm your belief in the Bible as the Word of God and their acceptance of the Salvation Army's articles <coughs> of faith. Today, in this congregation and in front of these people, you will declare that you will be responsive to the Holy Spirit and to seek to grow in grace. You will make the values of the kingdom of God the standard for your life, showing Christian integrity in your deeds, maintaining Christian ideals in your relationships and upholding the sanctity of marriage and family life. You will be a faithful steward of all that you have and all you are. You will abstain from the use of all enslaving substances and harmful activities. You will be active in God's work, both in sharing the gospel and in serving the needy and will contribute financially to its support. You will be true to the principles of the Salvation Army. Naomi, you enter this sacred covenant convinced that the love of Christ requires the devotion of your life to his service for the salvation of the whole world. You declare your determination, by God's help, to be a true soldier of the Salvation Army. And so, Naomi, in the presence of God and of this congregation, will you undertake, by the help of the Holy Spirit, to live and work as a true soldier of Jesus Christ and of the Salvation Army, according to the witness and the promises you make this day. If so, raise your right hand and say, I do. I do. And so, Naomi, a 
step, a further step of obedience and of commitment and following God who will direct your life if you allow the Holy Spirit his place in that direction. So in a moment I'm going to invite Kay to kneel with you at the mercy seat and to have that moment when you seal this covenant. I thank you, Kay, for looking after her. She's very special. So I thank you for all you've done for her. And so in these moments, I invite you to take Naomi and at the mercy seat, seal and sign that commitment. Please will you welcome your newest soldier, Naomi Blowers.
going to stand to sing these very important words. Because, Naomi, this is the way you will take, seeking to mirror his glory, living. Oh, sorry, we're not. We've got no, we're not. That's old age. <laughs> In the days to come, time, health, and talents presenting. This is a moment of commitment, all that I have, all that you hope to be, all that will come, will be God's. And so not only for you, but for us as his people, we make this commitment. Please will you stand to sing. I Please will you sit and uh, we will listen now as Naomi shares with us her testimony and then a solo. So some of you may know, my journey of faith has been one filled with unexpected twists and turns, much like my favourite story in the Bible, Esther. Growing up in a Christian home, I always knew about God's love and grace but it wasn't until I faced these significant challenges in the last few years that I truly understood the depths of his faithfulness. There have been times when I have felt overwhelmed by the weight of my past mistakes and the challenges of life, and there have been more times than not that I have struggled with my identity, my purpose, and I will be honest, at times, my faith. It seemed as though everything that I had planned for my life had fallen apart. My identity wasn't really one I was proud of, my relationships were strained, and I felt incredibly alone and lost. But during this time, I resonated deeply with Esther, who found herself in a foreign place, unsure of what her future held. But just as Esther's journey was marked by divine intervention, so was mine. Esther was chosen to be queen, not by her own doing, but by God's providence. Unfortunately, despite me looking great in a tiara, I am not destined to be a queen. <coughs> However, similar to Esther, I found that God placed key people in my life to support and guide me when times were tough. My mum and dad, and my granddad, constantly reminded me of God's promises and help me see that my worth was not determined by my circumstances, but by his love for me. One pivotal moment in my journey was when I attended TMS during the last few years. And much like Esther stepping into her role for such a time as this, I felt a nudge from God to step out in faith and serve others. This was a transformative moment and probably the first moment in a really dark time that I came to realize the true nature of the situation I was in. This experience took me out of my comfort zone and allowed me to witness firsthand the power of God's love in action. I saw lives being transformed and I felt the power from God to have the strength to change mine. Throughout TMS, I kept reflecting on Esther's courage. She risked her life to save her people, trusting that God had placed her in her position for a reason. Her story encouraged me to trust God's plan for my life, even when I couldn't see the end result. There were moments when fear and doubt crept in, but slowly 
I felt a renewed sense of purpose. I changed my outlook on life, and instead of throwing myself a pity party, I began to sense God's presence in life in a very tangible way. It was as if he was gently nudging me towards a deeper relationship with him, urging me to let go of the burdens I carried and to trust in his plan for my life. As I started to open my heart to God's love and grace, I found a sense of peace and contentment that I had never known before. It was a gradual process of surrendering my will to his, of letting go of my desires and ambitions in favour of his greater purpose for me. And with each passing day, I discovered new facets of God's character, his faithfulness in times of trial, his mercy in moments of weakness, his unending love that knows no bounds. Now, retrospectively, I can see how God was working in my life, even during the most difficult times. Just as he guided Esther, he was guiding me with a tapestry of grace and purpose. The twists and turns in my journey were not detours, but just essential parts of his plan. Now today I stand in awe of God's faithfulness. Today my devotion to God is not just a mere obligation, but a heartfelt response to his overwhelming love for me. It's a daily choice to trust in his goodness, to follow his leading, even when the path ahead is unclear. And while I may still face challenges along the way, I take comfort in knowing that God is always by my side, guiding me. Now, it feels like the natural course of action for me to uh, sing a song. Um, it's entitled Search Me. And this piece was first brought to my attention during D TMS, during the times of darkness in my life. And its words have remained imprinted on my heart ever since. I stand before you all today, not as a perfect Christian, but as someone who has experienced the love of God and wants to commit my life to him. The song talks about taking what these hands have made that toil from day to day, taking what this tongue has said, words full of emptiness, taking what these ears have heard that refuse to hear your word. Search me and know my heart. Lord, I want to be more like who you are. Now these words for me convey a profound longing for God to examine every aspect of my being, to sift through the actions of my hands and the words of my lips and to reveal the true state of my heart. It reaffirms for me that God seeks me out, taking everything I have done, everything that I have said, but most importantly, everything that I am. And today, I surrender it all to him, knowing that no matter my past or what I have endured, he knows it all, and he still loves me unconditionally. Singing this song is not just an act of worship, but a heartfelt plea for spiritual transparency and transformation that I want for my life. Search me and know my heart.
Naomi. <clears throat> I am a Salvation Army officer because many years ago I heard a voice saying to my heart, love my people. And throughout the years I have sought to do just that, to love God's people. I love God because of the words we're just going to sing, because in God I see a heart of compassion, a heart that moves my life, and certainly has moved yours. Thank you for those lovely words you've sung and for that shared testimony. So we will stand again to sing this fourth verse and uh, this will give us the opportunity to take our seats in the congregation. Thank you. Please sit down. The songsters are going to bring us a song now which fits really well with what's been, just been said and was chosen by Naomi. The song is entitled God Forgives and Forgets. Thank you.
race across the world is back. Five intrepid duos race from Japan to Indonesia. With no phones, bank cards, or directions. It's all Japanese. I think that's more for a turn. It's hard. It'd be hard. Be on the team. Look at Now, it's probably the only programme our whole family sit down and watch together. It's just such a great programme, and I would uh, uh, recommend it to anyone, okay? Uh, and it's so, so much so, right, that I think I'm going to have to watch the whole series again because we have ongoing analysis through the whole programme. I miss half of what's going on. And this year, that analysis included, I've been there, I've been on that bus, which was pretty irritating for the rest of us. <laughs> now... If you haven't ever watched it, I would highly recommend it. It follows several teams as they journey to certain destinations without a phone, without any internet access, and only using a very small amount of cash. And they have a number of journeys back to back over many weeks with very little direction and nobody to guide them. Now, as we continue our Transformation by Pentecost uh, series, we foc we're focusing today on Lydia. And her story shows us that transformations are often like a journey. Now, Naomi didn't know I was going to talk about journeys today, but I think you may have picked up, if you were listening carefully, that she mentioned journeys several times in her testimony there. Uh, and Lydia definitely went on a journey too. And her story shows us that transformations are often like a journey taken one step at a time. And as that program, Race Across the World, teaches us, it's so much better to know where we're going, isn't it? It's so much better to know where we're going. And it's even easier if we've got a guide to show us the way. But we need to follow the right guide. Now, our Bible reading that Beth uh, read earlier was... Uh, started with an account of a, of a journey, really. But it wasn't Lydia's journey right at the start of the Bible reading. It was a journey that Paul and his friends were taking. And they'd been sent off on a journey by the church in Antioch quite a while before, and they'd been sharing the good news of Jesus in loads of different places on this journey, so that huge numbers of people were being transformed, and the church grew now, Paul and his companions travelled to many different destinations. How did they decide where to go? Well, they followed the right guide. They were led by the Holy Spirit, and they trusted the Holy Spirit to show them the best way to go, to show them where to go. They listened to him. They were following the right guide. And we join Paul and his companions on their journey in verse 11 of chapter 16. And just before this, Paul and his friends had intended to go to Asia, but the Holy Spirit had other ideas, and instead they ended up in Troas, where it was literally plain sailing, ending up in Philippi in Europe. So they wanted to go to Asia, but they ended up in Europe. And Philippi was a really important Roman colony at the time, and it was in a really strategic position. It was sort of like the crossroads of northern Greece. They were following the right guide, and Paul and his com companions ended up here. And so the church moves into Europe, all because they followed the right guide. All of our lives are like a journey, and we all need to be transformed by Pentecost. But it isn't something that happens in an instant, and then everything is perfect. We are constantly on a journey, being more and more transformed into the person God wants us to be. And like Paul and his companions, we also need to follow the right guide. We need to listen to the Holy Spirit in every decision we need to make, whether that's a big decision or a small decision, because he knows what's best for us, doesn't he? The Holy Spirit knows what's best for us, and we need to trust and follow the Holy Spirit, the right guide for our journey in life. 
So Paul arrives in that place, Philippi, and on arriving in a place, they would often go to the local synagogue, but there probably wasn't one in Philippi, so instead they go to where the people meet to pray, outside the city gate by the side of the river. Again, they're following the right guide. The Holy Spirit is leading them where to go, even within Philippi, and they are led to a group of women who are gathered there. Now, I'm guessing, and this is just me guessing, okay, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing that in Paul's mind, he was hoping to find an influential group so that he could influence more people in that city of Philippi. So maybe he was shocked that God led them to a group of women because they were not very influential in those times. But the Holy Spirit knows best, as we shall see. And Paul didn't let his expectations get in the way of what God wanted. He followed the Holy Spirit and he was the right guide to follow. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will lead us to unexpected places and will ask us to do unexpected things. But we need to trust in him. He is the right guide to follow. And so we meet Lydia, the only woman of this group that is named in our reading. And we soon realise that Lydia is on a journey of transformation. And it's obvious that her journey is step by step. Now, in Race Across the World, the television programme, the contestants can't plan too far ahead. For one thing, they don't know where their next destination is going to be, but also they don't know what situations they're going to come across. They don't know what's round the next corner. They can't plan a a journey on a train or a bus journey. They can't plan who they will meet. They can't really plan how much money they're going to spend. They just have to go step by step. Now, we only have a few verses in the Bible about Lydia. And uh, we planned to put Lydia in this series a while back. And then when I got to it this week, I was like, oh my goodness, what on earth am I going to say about Lydia? It's only these few little verses in the Bible. But there's so much. And there's lots I can say today, but also in the extra slice groups this week, you'll find out a bit more. Uh, Yeah, because even though it's just a few verses, uh, they tell us quite a bit about this woman, Lydia. In particular, they tell us that she was transformed step by step. When we meet her, she's already taken the first step because we're told that she is a worshipper of God. She already knows God and she worships him. She's already a member of the Jewish faith. And so that is step one. She knows God and she worships him. Then she takes step two. Or to be more precise... God helps her to take step two because verse 14 says, the Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. So step two was for Lydia to be open to what Paul had to tell them about Jesus. Step one, she knows God and worships him. Step two, she's open to listen to what Paul has to say. And step three, she responds. She makes a commitment. It says in the Bible, Lydia and her whole household were baptised. Lydia makes that public declaration that she has been transformed. Similar to the public declaration that Naomi has made this morning. And Lydia's step-by-step transformation doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there, the step-by-step transformation. Having accepted Jesus into her life, she then realises that she's got a part to play. She's got a part to play. She's got something to give. And she invites Paul and his companions to stay at her house. She plays her part. She uses her gift of hospitality. So step one, she knows God and worships him. Step two, she's open to listen to what Paul has to say. Step three, she responds. And step four, she plays her part and uses her gift. Now, our journey of transformation needs to be step-by-step too. Transformation isn't something that happens in an instant and then everything's perfect. Sometimes we can take big leaps forward in our transformation, 
in our journey with God, but we need to keep going step by step. Sometimes we do stay still and even sometimes go backwards, but we can learn from those experiences. God wants us to move forward step by step. Now, those of you who've been part of Staple Hill for a while will remember Colin talking about a clock and about moving around the clock. And that's the same sort of thing. We're just explaining it in a different way. We're all on a journey. However long we've been a Christian, even those who aren't yet Christians are still on a journey. And God wants us to take the next step. He wants me to take my next step. And he wants you to take your next step. So what is the next step for you? Maybe you can identify with one of those four steps on the screen. The next step for you might be responding to God for the very first time. Or the next step might be making a public declaration like Naomi has this morning. It might be committing more fully to God. It might be Choosing to turn around and go in the right direction, a different direction to what you're going in at the moment. It might be offering more of your time or more of your treasure to God. It might be playing your part and using your gifts. We all have got a next step to take. We're all on a journey And so this morning, I'd encourage each one of us to listen to what our guide is saying to us, what the Holy Spirit is asking of us, what our next step should be, and are we prepared to take it? Or will you just stay still or even go backwards? Now, in the programme Race Across the World... Uh, things didn't always go to plan. That's what makes it entertaining, isn't it? And maybe the tickets for a bus journey were all sold out or they got on the wrong bus and ended up going in the opposite direction in this most recent series. And also in this series, all of them had to take a detour on uh, on a plane from Korea to Vietnam due to the difficulties of traveling through China. They were, you know, the whole program had to take a detour. Things don't always go to plan. And we do have to expect the unexpected and be prepared to take detours. That's going to come up on our screen. We need to be prepared to take detours. Now, both Paul and Lydia were prepared to take detours. I think Naomi even mentioned that word in her testimony as well. Uh, Paul following the right guide, the Holy Spirit, travelled to Philippi in Europe instead of going to Asia. And Lydia suddenly had several unexpected guests in her house. And these two detours had amazing outcomes. Because Paul's detour meant the church spreading to a whole new continent, to Europe. And Lydia's detour meant a new church was founded by her, a woman, and that church was the church at Philippi. And we have the letter to the Philippians, don't we? That was to the church at Philippi. And that letter in the Bible has spoken to and influenced millions of Christians ever since, just because of Lydia's detour. Detours can be amazing. Sometimes we do need to be prepared for detours. We need to expect the unexpected. We have to realise that sometimes our guide, the Holy Spirit, will ask us to do things that are the opposite of the plans that we had. Do you have the courage to follow him no matter where he leads? Are you prepared to take detours? Now, the one thing that I think really makes Race Across the World entertaining is the personalities involved, isn't it? It's those couples that, um, that are on the journey. It's the way that they interact with each other, often disagreeing and getting on each other's nerves, but also trusting and supporting each other. Whether it's a husband and wife team or a brother and a sister or a mother and daughter or two friends, 
It's those relationships that make the program entertaining. And journeying with others makes everything so much more possible. We need to journey with others. Paul journeyed with others. Throughout Acts, we hear about his companions, including Barnabas and Silas. Uh, but there were others. We don't even know their names. Paul didn't travel alone. He journeyed with others. And after this encounter with Lydia, Paul and his companions continue their journey. And just after meeting Lydia, that, that journey involved a prison stay. But that's another story for another day. But then at the end of the chapter, at chapter 16 of Acts, we have our last mention of Lydia, our very last mention of Lydia. And in verse 40 of, verse, of chapter 16, it says this. After Paul and Silas came out of the prison, they went to Lydia's house, where they met with the brothers and sisters and encouraged them. So Paul and Silas, a little while after, return to Lydia's house. And we see that Lydia has also continued her journey with others. Believers are meeting in her house. The church of Philippi has begun. And they're journeying together. And Paul and Silas are journeying with them as they encourage them. Paul later writes in his letter to the Philippians this. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel. Because of your partnership in the gospel. Lydia partnered with others. The church at Philippi had started. Paul partnered with them. And he depended on their prayers, their encouragement, their support. They were journeying together even when they were separated. And it's vital that Christians journey together. Journey with others. It's difficult, if not impossible, I would say, to be a Christian on your own. We need to journey with others. And that's what church is for, a place where we can support and encourage each other, a place where we can learn from each other, a place where we can challenge each other if necessary. And journeying together is often best done in small groups, like the group that met in Lydia's home, and like our extra slice groups that meet sometimes in people's homes, journeying together in our transformation, in our journey of transformation, where we can support, encourage each other, challenge each other, learn from each other. A couple of weeks ago, we learned that Peter was transformed by Pentecost. Last week, Stephen was transformed by Pentecost. Today, we've learned about how Lydia was transformed by Pentecost. And God wants every single one of us to be transformed by Pentecost too. And it is a journey of transformation. It's not a once-only event where it's done and dusted all in one go. It's ongoing. God wants us to keep on moving forward in our journey of transformation. Following the right guide, the Holy Spirit. Going step by step, always moving forward. And sometimes being prepared to take detours, doing and going to places that are unexpected. And he wants us to journey with others, supporting and encouraging each other along the way. We thank God today for the step that Naomi has made. But we pray that the Holy Spirit will show each of us the next step he wants us to make too. Song number 628 says this, Thou art the way, none other dare I follow. Thou art the truth and thou hast made me free. Thou art the life, the hope of my tomorrow. Thou art the Christ who died for me. Hopefully those are words that we can sing. It's one of those songs that you're actually talking to God in it. Thou art the way, you are the way. We want to use more modern language. We're saying to God, you are my way. You're my guide. I want to follow in your way. I want to lead where you take me, even if it's a detour. And I want to take that next step. And as we sing this song, we all need to ask God what that next step is because it will be different for each one of us. But we want to keep moving forward, step by step, in that transformation that God has for each one of us. So please sing these words, not just as words, but thinking about those steps as we sing, thank you.
Behold thou my feet, let there be no returning, along the path which thou hast bid me tread. Train thou my mind, I would be ever learning the better way thy fame to spread. Keep thou my heart ablaze with holy burning, that love for souls may ne'er be dead. Heavenly Father, we just pray this morning that we will all understand the journey that we're on, that journey of transformation. And at whatever stage of that journey we're on, even if we've maybe gone a little bit backwards lately, we just pray that you'll help us to see what our next step is. Help us to know what it is. Help us to have the courage to step out and take that next step, Lord, so that we continue to be transformed to the people that you want us to be. We ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. Now, our final song is a song that Naomi chose. But very interestingly, it's perfect for what I'm talking about. Because the first couple of lines say, I'll go in the strength of the Lord in paths he has marked for my feet. I'll follow the light of his word, nor shrink from the dangers. I mean, I'm going to read the whole verse, sorry. His presence my steps shall attend, his fullness my wants shall supply. On him till my journey shall end, my unwavering faith shall reply. Rely. It's totally about a journey of transformation that we're all on. So we're going to sing this. Now, just before we stand up and sing, let me just say that um, the Naomi's family have provided some cake. Ooh. That's always good, isn't it? So make sure you stay for the refreshments afterwards and grab some cake. But also, in the foyer at the back of the hall there, um, Naomi's put a blessings jar with some little pieces of paper. And what she'd love you to do is write a little message on a little piece of paper and put it into the jar, just so that it's something that she can look at in days ahead uh, some encouragement for her that would be really good so there's two things there eat cake and write a blessing thank you we'll stand and we'll sing this through <laughs> Thank you. 
And a prayer to finish. Holy Spirit, help us to follow you as our guide every day of our lives. Encourage us to move forward step by step. Challenge us to take detours and expect the unexpected and show us how we can better journey with others as you transform us day by day, we pray. Amen.